Hey, in this episode, I'm going to tell you what Alex Hermosi did, what he did specifically on his live event to launch his new book, $100 million leads. And I'm going to tell you what he did, not what he said, because this was very interesting to see taking place. It was very awesome. And it will help you, especially if you're an entrepreneur, someone ambitious or someone that wants to make more sales and uh, learn from very successful people. But even if you're not an entrepreneur, we're also going to talk about human psychology and some psychological levers that people use to sell you on something or make you do things that you otherwise wouldn't. And this affects every human being. So yeah, I think it will be very helpful to anyone that is interesting in not take, be taken advantage of and also use those psychological levers, levers to your advantage because you just can. And if you do it properly, ethically, I think it's a good thing. Now, uh, I'm uh, not a native English speaker. So as you notice, you can have some, uh, I can have some struggle finding my words, but bear with me because it will be very profitable for you to do so. So here's the plan. We're going to be talking about what I learned from Alex Hermosi, uh, what, what he did on his live event, the four most important things he said, and the lessons from the book uh, Alex Hermosi always makes content about on human psychology, which will prevent you a lot of mistakes and dangerous misjudgments on your day-to-day -day life. And if you're new here, my name is Valdi Nissan Sacco, uh, Ivaldi Sacco as a shorter name, uh, founder of Origrowth.com. We help business coaches, experts to attract high-paying clients every month on autopilot with our automated client attraction system. If you're interested in that, uh, there should be a link somewhere you can just find us and maybe, you know, there's a list, a wait list on which you can uh, wait and uh, maybe know more about our system. Uh, now, this podcast will serve you tremendously because what I do here is I just condense information that I learn. I just learn through entire books that I read, master classes that I take, courses, and my experience. And I just tell you all about it here on this podcast to help you learn faster, succeed faster, better your life. And even if you're not, if you, even if you're not an entrepreneur, I think it serves you a lot because I just want to grow as a human being. I just want to be able to live my life to the fullest. And I want to help you do that, as, do this as well. Uh, I just like to document the process here, what I learned to help you become truly free and successful because I believe truly deep down that it is our right to be truly free and our duty to be successful. So if that interests you, I suggest you subscribe right now to not forget and miss the next episodes because they will serve you as well. And we have a little fee on this show is that if you get some value out of it, you share it with your friends. And if you don't get any value out of it, you don't share it. And that's our little agreement. Thank you. Now, what did I take from what Alex Hermosi did on his live event? Let's get into it. It will be very interested, at least. So, let me get my notes, let me get my glasses on, and we'll get started because, uh, you know, this event was about leads, and leads are very important for any business, and uh, because people must know about you and your offer for them to buy from you. If they don't know you, they can't buy from you, and so leads are people that have the problem that you solve and have the money to for you to pay to, to be paid right and he said something very interesting if you just double your leads you will double your business and this is one key takeaway he, i think he said it in the beginning it's very true like it's it just like so basic and we don't think about it now if you always know how to get leads this gives you infinite chances to get it right and for any entrepreneur starting up it's just a good idea to have a lot of leads up front because it allows you to be to not be in a scarcity mindset. If you're just starting up and you see one lead at oh my as oh I need to sell the, this lead because if I don't, who am I gonna sell to next? Right? I need I, I need this to, to work. And so you're needy. And nobody wants to buy from someone that is needy. And so when you get a lot of leads. And you know how to get them. You know, just, you know, there's infinite leads. You're not as needy. And you can just be chill, be relaxed. Uh, and 
it, it gives you this confidence that you need to be able to sell people, especially if you're selling high ticket services or anything that is uh, a sales process. You need to not feel needy. If, if you call on the phone and you feel like, oh my God, I need you to, to buy from me, it's, it's not going to work. People, it's just, it's just like a, if you go talk to a girl or a man and you feel desperate for them to be in a relationship with you, they, they're just going to be afraid, right? They, they just don't want it. It's just not appealing. So if you know you have infinite possibilities, this gives you the confidence, right? This is very, and plus you just can just try again, try again, which gives you a lot of repetition, which makes you good, which makes you ultimately win at business. And so with us, he shared a few lessons. He gave us uh, the four core, which I'm going to give to you as well. I think that this was the you know, most uh, valuable thing when he said it step by step. And uh, yeah, th this, I'm, go I'm going to tell you exactly what it was. So the four core ways to get leads are, one, warm outreach, reaching out to people you know. This is the first one. He gave you a step-by-step -step process. I'm not going to talk about it right now. If you want, you can just get the book. Um, the second way is posting free content. It's one to many, right? You get a higher leverage. And third way is paid advertising, which you also get a, pay, a higher, a higher leverage. But this time, this time you just pay instead of creating free content. And the fourth one is cold outreach, reaching out one-on-one -on -one to people you don't know. And right now, I the only thing I didn't use is warm outreach. I didn't use that because I, I was scared, I think, at the beginning to sell to people I knew because I didn't see myself as valuable enough and maybe I don't have a good enough service, right? So I, I didn't see myself charging people I knew for that. But maybe I should have. I should have had. It, it would have made me progress way faster. So if you're starting up, I think it's a good, great way to start. After that, on the event, this is the most important thing that he did. And he didn't say that he did that, but he did it. And it was, it was awesome. Especially when you see, you know that what, what he's doing exactly. And you say, okay, I know what you're doing. And it's working. And it's working even on me. It's great. So uh, he told us about all the systems that he had because he... Uh, told us and he mocked that a lot. I have a big surprise coming for you. And I've been working on this project for the past four years. It's extremely valuable. And even for people that, that have not started in business yet, I will make sure you succeed as well. This is what he, like, he just really, really emphasized this point. And then he told us what was this secret project and he told us all of what he, it contained, right? All of the stack. And so he told us about the lead magnet mastery, the first, the first five clients framework, the Mosey media content method, the cold Irish method, the advertising method, the referrer playbook, all those things are like with a lot of steps, step-by-step -step processes, which each one he said, okay, uh, so in the system, in this big surprise, you will get the lead magnet mastery worth $1,997, right? And something like this, I don't remember. And so he said that for all those systems and he just added and added and added the systems. It was more and more valuable. He just completely sold everyone on this system. Everybody wanted it. And at, at the end he said, okay, but the, the total value of this is $10,192. But you're not going to pay that. Because today, I said you were going to do get, to get something special today because you're live with me. And I want people in the future, when I say I'm going live, to come. Well, this time, you're going to get that not for $10,900, not for $10,000, for $5,970. Something like this. And it will be totally worth it for you to pay that. It will be a bargain for you to pay that, but you're, gonna, you're not going to pay that today. And everybody was saying, okay, he's going to make an offer so good that people can't say no to. And 
uh, they were saying, okay, uh, he's going to put it at $1,997. And some people were saying, no, he's going to make it even better. He's going to make it $997. And so he went on, he said, you're not going to pay $2,997. You're not. And so you're still going to have an investment. And so he made us all believe that this was going to be an investment, which it is, but it was not a monetary investment. He did all this and people were here ready to pay $5,000. I saw a lot of them ready to pay $5,000. Some of them ready to pay $2,000 and a lot of them ready to pay $1,000. Completely ready and they were in, but he did something even more. And I knew that from the beginning. I actually even wrote in the chat. I was like, guys, it's going to be free. And it was, he said like, you're not going to even pay that. Even if it would be worth it for you to pay $5,000, you're not going to pay that today. It's going to be free. I love you, Mose Nation. It's how he calls his audience if he's not familiar with them. And it was insane, right? It was insane. And what he did right now, doing all this, is that he sold, just like he was going to sell a 5,000 package, he sold like his breath away. Like he completely sold. He was, he was wanting to, he wanted to increase so much the value of this and he did. It was highly, highly, highly valuable up to the point that people were here willing to pay $5,000 and yet he did it for free. And while he increased the value so much, he didn't increase the price. What he did is, is that his value that he increased so much transformed into goodwill. And this is insane because when you do that, the marketplace will reward you. And I bet he was rewarded with his next thing that he said, okay, at the beginning he said, uh, you, I'm going to t give you the system and I'm going to allow some, some of you to uh, help me on my mission, my mission to make world top uh, business education accessible to everyone. I think this is uh, their mission. And he did that in, in this way. The way to help him on his mission was to get his book. And he told them, okay, you can buy a package of three and give some to other people. And this way you help people know how to get leads. And you actually helped me on my mission. For those of you who are more privileged, who are not in a uh, hard financial situation. And uh, he gave us the option, right? He was like, he didn't use any goodwill on this event, I believe. Like, it was all like he was giving away stuff. And plus, when, he, when you could uh, buy the package of three, you got his hat, one of his hat, acquisition.com hat, right? The ones that he only has and his team members. And he gave the meaning of this hat. And the meaning of this hat was that he even like put more value on the hats than on, that was a bonus, than he did on the, the package of three books, right? The three books was for people to help him on his mission. And because they were worthy, of his hat, he would give one away for them. And so the meaning of the hat was that at the beginning, uh, in his early stage of entrepreneurship, every single business he started, he started to make a hat, right? It was his hat first because he said that it, it, it was the only tangible, the only real, the only thing that made his business real, right? And it was something that he, he could touch. And every time he started a business, he just the first thing he did is make a hat with his logo on it, right? And so it, it was kind of a, a ritual, right? That he did every time and which also gave him like good luck because he ended up succeeding. And uh, it was a way to say, okay, I'm worthy of this, miss this mission. And he gave us his values at his company, uh, what he stands for. And only the people that stand for that would get three books and give two away or even get 10 books because it was like two different possibilities. Uh, three actually get one book, get three books plus one hat, get 10 books plus one hat. 
and then it gave such a scarcity like such a high high scarcity because it was saying it was explaining it explaining it like very well i prepared this event in advance right this is what he said and uh two months ago we were here on a subscriber amount on a subscriber count we were at i don't know 500,000 subscribers except right now we're at 1.5 million so i printed copies of this book i prepared only 200,000 copies I, I don't remember the numbers right but it was like very low compared to how many people would be able to get to get it. i mean how many people would want it and so a lot of demand he like he actually took the concept in his first book 100 million dollar offer and he made an offer so good people couldn't refuse and so he increased so much the demand for his product i mean he made everyone perceive that his demand for his product was so high and with, with proof right a lot of subscribers a lot of people just on the event 200,000 people i think live plus people on youtube plus people on all other social media and it, we had only 30,000 hats and he had 1.5 million subscribers and on the last video that he did he had 1.5 million views so people knew it was going to s sell out and so high scarcity a lot of people bought i'm sure at least uh and um yeah this was an insane offer i mean if you you can just still go and watch the the live event in my opinion it went a little bit fast i think a lot of people could have gotten a lo lot more value if he talked a little more slowly but at the same time i think he just got the attention of everyone he didn't lose it he his average watch time i believe was pretty high and uh people still listened i still listened so i i think it was a good thing it just like we didn't have time to consume the value and indeed it was not his point his point was not to teach people his point was completely just to sell and this is what you got to do when you have something free to offer to people and this is what i did with my mindset training i did it on a much lower scale of course but in the first part i actually sold people on the mindset training of how important it is and why they should consider doing this with their time instead of something else I sold this free thing. I, I actually told people, hey, this could be actually sold for thousands of dollars. And you're here getting it for free. Consider, consider it as it is very valuable to actually take action on it because it is, like, it has the ability to change your life. And so on this live event, he increased so much the value in people's mind of his book and of his new course. That is completely free it was this this was the surprise i was not surprised at all i mean i i don't know how maybe i've watched too many of his content but i completely knew his strategy a lot of people didn't seem to know and um it was his free course on his website and now thanks to this event and thanks to his new book people have the value of a high valuable course when it's still free so when you're giving away stuff, don't just give it away. Sell it. Sell it and then give it away. Increase the value in people's perceptions and then give it away. Because if you don't, people don't see it, don't see it as valuable. People won't even take the time to, to go on it, to, to watch it or to consume it. So it's just, if you want it to be worth it for you to create something free and to create a lead magnet, for example, sell it give the people why this is so valuable how did you come up with all this material if you don't it's not going to seem so valuable people won't consume it so it's just a waste of time now alex likes to also read books and one book in particular which is this one influence by robert cialdini now I've got the, the French version here and uh, it was a, like, a little hard to translate but I'm going to be, do my best to give you my notes on the best things that I read from it this week which will help you uh, tremendously in like all situations of, of, of life, right? Just 
human psychological levers that people use either against you or you can use on people ethically, of course, to help you make more sales or in general, just not fall into those psychological, psychological levers because that you, you just could make wrong decisions and actually you could actually die because of these. Because of one of these, you could actually die because you wouldn't, you would make such a bad choice that it would put you in a death or life, like life or death situation. So first one, first note that I have written down, let me drink a little bit of water. It's very hot in here. Commitment. So commitment and public commitment. So uh, this comes from the psychological levers to be consistent, like the need to be consistent with what you do with your previous actions, right? And previous words. When, uh, so what we do influence what we think of ourselves. And this uh, has a lot of power. When, when you do something, when you do a certain action, you view yourself as the type of person that does these types of actions. So one, if at one point you, uh, I don't know, you buy something, you buy a little something from someone. Well, you're going to, your identity is going to shift a little bit as a client, as someone that buys from this person. And so when you buy a little bit from this person, you're going to stay in consistency. You stay consistent with this action, with your identity now, and you're going to buy again. And so this is how uh, the need to feel consistent can play with you and you can just make it play for you. So the way to do this is to make people t put one front, one foot in the door. And he, the author used an example of the example of China, China communism, communist China in uh, a certain war was taking American hostages and they did not harm them at all. They treat them, they treated them the, pretty decently, especially for a war. It was like pretty decent, I think. And they did not break them by force. What they did is that they, they had a technique called little by little. We're going to get Americans to become communist, communists. And the way they did that is by the small commitment, just small commitment. And uh, they asked Americans to write some uh, notes as uh, America is not perfect. And so they just wrote that. And that's a little foot in the door. After that, they tried, uh, they, they, uh, they, make the, they made them write, because when you write down, you do something written, and it's just a lot more powerful than when you say something. When you say something, okay, you can forget about it, but when you write it, you, you, have, much, you have less chance to forget it, and it's just written in, in stone. Like, it's just like you can see it, there's proof of it. So it's much more powerful. So they make them, they made Americans write down, communism is not the worst thing in the world. And so this is a little foot in the door, like tiny foot in the door. And next thing you know, they had Americans saying on public, on video, on public, that, you know what? America is not perfect. Communism has a lot of good uh, points especially for China. I think communism for China is a good thing on public. And at this point, they won because they turned American capitalist into communism, into communists and people that were uh, like brainwashed by China. And when other Americans that were not yet uh, one foot in the door, they were influenced by these Americans that they saw on TV. Because once they saw that, they noticed, well, huh, he looks like me. And this is uh, the psychological level, lever of 
social proof. And social proof works better when people are alike. If you see someone that looks like you, comes from the same background as you, has the same values as you, I'm an American, he's American, and he's saying that America is not perfect. Huh, I think he might be right. And so once you start thinking this, it gives you the internal, it makes you do an internal choice. And this is another psychological lever, internal choice. When, for example, you want your kid to behave well and to not lie. All right. You want to teach your kids that lying is bad. If you go about it in the way that you're going to uh, punish them if they lie. Hey, Johnny, lying is, is if, if, you, if I catch you lying, I'm going to punish you pretty bad. And if you say that, say that to, the, to your kid, he's going to have, he's not going to lie, but he's not going to lie when you are here. So when you're not going to be here, he's not going to have the external pressure, the external thing making him do this choice. And so you don't want to put an, ex- an external motivation in people's mind to do what you want. You, what you want is to make people want to do it themselves and to make their own choice and so have an internal choice, not an external choice because if, 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 that, if daddy catch me lying, uh, I'm going to be in trouble. So when he's not going to be here, I'm not going to lie. But once he's not here, I'm free. I can lie whatever, however I want. What if you did this instead? If you went about it, Johnny, you know, lying is very bad. I, I hope you will never lie. Lying is very bad because and you give him a, a reason because when you lie, people don't trust you anymore. And so when you, and you don't give an, a pressure, you don't give an external motivation. You just say that, right? With like, it's kind of their choice. And so you don't pressure them. And when you're here, they're going to make this, this choice, but it's their choice. So they choose not to lie when you're here. And once they did this little foot in the door, they did this action. When you were here, because it was their choice, what do you know? They view themselves as the type of person, as the type of kid to not lie. And because they made this choice, because of the psychological need for consistency, they will keep up with this choice. They will continue to choose not to lie because they they view lying as bad. It's just their choice. Or they just don't even want to lie. Like they just like, because they want to remain consistent with their identity. I I, I don't lie. This is not what I do. And so this this way is their choice. And because it's their choice, they're going to keep doing this behavior. Try to think of how these things can apply to business. If you're in business or in your life. For example, I actually have, I have no example right now in my mind. I'm just trying to think right now of, of one. So uh, you're in business and you, well, you don't say to your client like immediately forefront, okay, if, if you don't get this, this is going to happen. You ask him a question. What do you think is going to happen if this? And he answers, okay, I, I think I'm going to be in a pretty bad situation. It's their choice. And so they're going to remain consistent with what they just said. Now, one way you could fall for this trap. So the author says a little story about how a woman uh, knocked on his door and uh, it was a pretty woman knocking on his door and saying, hi, we're doing a a little, uh, we're asking uh, people in this neighborhood questions about their hobbies. Can I? Can I ask you some questions? And so he said, sure, enter. And was like kind of puffing his chest and trying to look good because the girl was attractive. And she enters and she asks him a couple of questions. The questions were of this kind. How many times a week do you get out? And he said, Oh, I'm out. I'm out every day. I just, I don't even know when I'm com- coming home. I have such a busy life outside. It's a, and he just like exaggerated it a little bit because he wanted to appear in a certain way. And then she said, oh, great. 
how many times do you go to the theater uh, a week? And she said, oh, I'm three, four, m maybe five sometimes. It depends. And he exaggerated this a little bit more. He, she said, uh, do you often uh, go out to dinner? And he said, oh, yeah, I love to. I love a good night out. I just, I just, I don't even cook anymore. A little bit exaggerating a little bit more, right? Do you go bowling? And he said, oh, yeah, every week. Every week I go bowling. And it was not necessarily the case because he wanted to appear a certain way, right? So he said that. He committed to being this type, kind of person. Now, at the end of the discussion, after a few more questions, she says, well, Mr. Cialdini, this looks great. You have, uh, we are also here to uh, sell you, she didn't say that, but uh, we're also here to sell you on uh, this membership that allows you to have all your hobbies at a 50% discount every year. This is just, you're going to save so much money with this because of your lifestyle. This is insane. And so I think you really should do that. And he's here, just, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck, not knowing what to do. And at this point, he has a signal that what he's going to do is not going to be a, the, the good choice because he's, he's feeling like a little hurt in his stomach. He's feeling a little bad, right? Because he can't say anything like that will make him appear a liar. And I didn't say that in the beginning, but the, the origin of the need to be consistent is because in society, instinctively, you know, if someone is not consistent, he's a little crazy. He's, he changes his opinions and his mind often. He's not reliable. And so we can't trust this person. And so if we can't trust you, you're in danger because you're not going to be in the group. Like this is a, 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 an instinct. A, yeah, an instinct. And you want to seem, at least, to seem consistent with your actions because then you're viewed as trustworthy. You're viewed as someone reliable. And you can, you know, you can trust this person. And now he can't say, well, I lied. I, 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 don't, I don't do this. Like, he's, he's feeling bad. He's stuck. If he doesn't buy the membership, it's, it's completely dumb because you're going to save 50%, right? And uh, if he says the truth and it, uh, he doesn't buy it because he says the truth, he's going to be a liar and he doesn't want to be appearing as a liar in front of this pretty girl. And he's just stuck. So he signed and he got a membership. Now, he says that looking back, what he should have done was I should have called out the, the technique. He should have called out the girl and, says, and, and say something like this. Well, uh, I know exactly what you're doing. You're using the, the psychological need for consistency against me. Of course, you asked me a couple of questions and I answered a little bit exaggeratively because I exaggerated a bit my answers because I wanted to impress you because you're a pretty girl and all men would do exactly the same thing. Now, I won't fall for this. I don't need your service. I don't need your, your membership. So I won't buy from you. And at this point, they just cut off God, right? Sometimes maybe some people are asking you this question, don't even know they're using it. It's just the process of the company. But if you say that, it puts back the context and you don't feel the need to be consistent anymore because it's not, they have not be, they have not been, uh, they have not, well, because they used a psychological need against you. So you don't feel this need anymore, right? Because you feel like they cheated. So it's, it's just right that you kind of replicate this against them and cheat as well. And this was the psychological need for being consistent and the small commitment. Now there's one which is social proof. And this is a little bit like I, which uh, the one I, that I told you about uh, the American that is f filmed and is talking on video. He's a social proof for Americans. If, if he thinks this, his American is like me, I should think this as well. When you have a lot of people leaving a review on Amazon, you think the more review there is, the better the product should be, right? Logical. If a lot of people think um, I'm good at sports, well, I, I, I should be good at sport because everybody believes that. So it's, 
it either reinforces your belief or destroy a false belief. So uh, if you thought you were good in math, for example, and then a lot of people tell you, I oh, know you're just completely bad at math. Everybody thinks you're bad at math. And if you think that everybody thinks it's bad at math, the public eye will reinforce their, uh, their truth on you. So you will believe what they believe because it's this this is social proof and so you need well you feel more uh, that their other people's um, opinions is worth more than your own and this is natural but it can work against you so um, there was a paper that said uh, that there were a lot of research done on uh, the amount of death after a suicide is uh, mentioned in the news and what they noticed with a lot of data is that every time in a suicide uh, someone that, that, that committed suicide was put in the news the number of death four days after that increased by a lot and it happened every single time and the reason was that people because of social proof people viewed that as a legitimate, a legitimate action. They, they saw that as something that is okay to do because if they did that and it is in the news, it's social proof. And uh, another psychological um, action happens is the imitation effect. So when you see someone that is like you doing something, you, you, th you, you, f you want to do the same thing. You feel like it's okay for you to do the same thing and you should actually do the same thing because a lot of people like you are doing this. And so the author says that once he knew that once he became aware of this, he started to stop traveling when he saw something like this in the news because the dangers went up a lot because when I forgot to mention that when someone committed suicide, it's not only the death by suicide that increased, it's also the accident, the uh, airplanes crashing as well. And so he didn't travel every time someone committed suicide. For four or five days after that, he didn't travel because it increased so much the risk to be in an accident. Because the morale of people when seeing people committing suicide decreased by a lot. Another thing with the imitation effect. So... Um, if you, they gave, uh, they wanted to help children stop being afraid of dogs. And uh, they did that in a group, it was a study, and uh, for four days, they made a group of children, a group of four or five years old, watch a video of another five years old, five year old, play with a, a dog, playfully and having fun and being joyful without all the risks and negativity that was inside the kids uh, minds uh, you know as okay this is a dog this is like threatening and everything when they saw that for four days the fifth day they went with the dog and they were completely like playful and they didn't like do anything they were not scared anymore because they they saw themselves doing this if, if this person can do it ah, so can I and so this is a way where if you are afraid of some circumstance, you can actually visualize as well. You can visualize yourself doing this and make yourself believe and have this social proof that you, you can do it. If a lot of people like you can do in public speaking and you see that and you see that there's no bad negative consequence or negative thing and you get used to that, for a certain amount of time, your mind is going to start believing that oh, I should be able to do this as well. So you're going to take action and you're going to become more comfortable. And this is the way you erase any fear. So these were psychological levers. Please use them ethically. <laughs> and uh, don't try to... Because when you will do that, it will inevitably come back at you. Like, honestly... If you sell someone that you should not be selling, selling him, if 
you see an opportunity to sell someone which is not your perfect client and you don't know if you can get them results it will come back at you because they won't get great results and if they don't get great results they will do negative word of mouth which is the worst thing that you can have happen for your business anyway i hope you found this valuable if you did please leave a like subscribe to not miss the next episode and if you got some value please share the show pay the fee uh and yeah i'll see you in the next episode bye take care